November is that time of the year where pretty much all the major players unveil their most innovative devices and flagship phones, and just the sheer number of new models makes us quite excited. Samsung launched their new foldable phones, Apple released their iPhone 14 lineup, Google their Pixel 7 series, Motorola their Razer and Edge 30 line, Huawei launched Mate 50 and Nova 10 models, but what about Xiaomi? They have a usual lineup that includes 12T, Mix Fold 2, Redmi Note 12 series, and of course, the 12S Ultra. This just might be the most controversial phone right now. It claims to feature the largest camera sensor on any smartphone, 1 inch, which in reality is not really a 1 inch sensor. Plus, even though most of us would think that the big sensor is the one located in the middle of the camera housing, it is in fact somewhat further on the side. Even though it's being sold only in China, we got an opportunity to test it and show you what it's capable of in case it gets released worldwide or you get your hands on one. The Xiaomi 12S Ultra is finally here, three months after it broke the internet announcing the biggest camera sensor ever on a mobile device. Now we all know that more megapixels don't necessarily guarantee a better photo, but what about the sensor lens? Larger pixels certainly mean the camera can absorb more light, and the Sony IMX989 currently delivers the largest physical pixels on a smartphone. Of course, a great camera system isn't the only thing that makes a good phone. Before we dive any further into this review, let's get the elephant out of the room and explain the 1 inch sensor controversy. For quite a while now, the sensor size labels have not corresponded to their physical dimensions, and the IMX989 is not a 1 inch or 2.54 centimeters in size diagonally. The terminology used for smartphone sensor size is quite old and refers to the so-called optical format of the sensor, or the diameter of the video camera barrel needed to project an image that will cover the entire sensor. So it's a relic of a very old terminology which doesn't make much sense today because it's based on a technology that has long been outdated, but no one bothered to change it. Now still, even though the scale is off by a factor of 1.5 compared to the actual physical dimension, at least it's handy when comparing it with other lenses. Now, large sensor aside, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra is a very interesting phone. It comes with everything you would expect from a modern flagship model, the latest and greatest chipset, the best screen, plenty of RAM and storage, premium design, 5 camera sensors, fast charging, as well as the eco leather back and water and dust resistance. Already sounds like a great package, but there is more, so let's take one step at a time. And right off the bat, we have to mention that the Xiaomi 12S Ultra is a phone that walks a thin line between a phone with a big camera and a camera that has a big phone attached to it. The huge camera housing sticks out quite a bit and consists of a large rectangular and circular piece that rises out of it. Luckily, Xiaomi packs the 12S Ultra with a protective case, which comes with a caveat of missing out on the feel of the eco leather under your fingertips. In addition to the various inscriptions on the camera itself, there is a discreet Xiaomi logo on the lower part of the back and much more noticeable white Leica inscription in the upper left corner of the back on the rectangular housing that houses the cameras. And just to be clear right away, the centrally positioned camera is the ultra-wide angle sensor while the main one is the one on the bit left right next to it. Below is a periscope telephoto camera with 5x optical zoom and right next to it is the flash while the 32 megapixel front facing camera peeks through the hole in the middle of the upper part of the screen. Now in terms of size, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra is an absolute unit and fairly similar to the successor of the Samsung Note series, the S22 Ultra. At 225 grams, it is not for everyone, but those dimensions bring some other advantages. For example, there's a large 6.73 inch LTPO2 AMOLED screen that dominates 89% of the front, hampered by less noticeable bezels that are nicely rounded in the corners. The phone houses a large 4860 mAh battery, stereo speakers and space for cooling solutions for the powerful Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset. If you manage to take your eyes off the gravity inducing camera system, next thing you would probably notice is the display, which is irresistibly reminiscent of the one on the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Same panel, same dimensions, 
same resolution, and even the same front camera position. I gotta mention that the 12S Ultra seems much brighter than I remember on the 12 Pro, and it really is bright as we were able to measure 1209 nits, which means that this is one of the brightest screens we've ever tested and that you won't be chasing a shade with this phone on a hot summer day. In any case, the screen is 6.73 inches with 3200 x 1440 pixels that most users will keep at a lower resolution in order to get longer battery life. It is an LTPO2 matrix with refresh range ranging from 1 to 120 Hz, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision support, and that can display a billion different colors. The screen has a modern Gorilla Glass Victus scratch protection, and the phone has earned an IP68 dust and water protection rating, which means that it can be submerged in water up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, or be used in a desert where dust gets into every crevice and opening there is. The display on it is razor sharp, and when it comes to colors, the image leans towards cooler tones, but luckily, Xiaomi allows you to change display options so you can adjust them to your personal likings. Thanks to the LTPO matrix, the refresh rate can be lowered down to 1 or 10 Hz depending on the brightness, whether there is a static image on the screen or you don't interact with it, and all the way to 60 or 120 Hz when you're using it, watching videos or gaming. This allows for a better battery life since the screen usually plays a large role in battery drain. And now since we're mentioning the battery, I have to say that considering the phone's dimensions, the battery life is honestly mediocre. You would expect a great battery life from a ginormous phone like this, but I gotta say that we were not really impressed. After 10 hours video playback of YouTube content with the brightness at 50%, the battery showed 39%, which usually means about day of combined use. To be honest, YouTube did not exceed 60 Hz when playing video content, but that's why the charger managed to charge the battery to 75% in half an hour, meaning that 0 to 100% charge takes about 46 minutes. And now is the great time to mention that the 12S Ultra comes with a 67 watt charger that is, in fact, included in the package. Before we talk about what's under the hood, we can't continue without mentioning the high quality finish. The aluminum body is black and matte and gives the body much needed solidity and robust. Stereo speakers are placed on the top and the bottom and one of the exotic features that stands out is the infrared port so you don't have to worry about where your different remotes around the house are. The rounded edges of the case give it a certain amount of elegance and makes it look somewhat smaller so the 12S Ultra looks more compact next to the S22 Ultra with which it shares almost identical dimensions. That is the case until you flip the phone over and see the camera system the size of New Zealand. The stereo speakers are very loud but like on the aforementioned Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra they have one problem. The top speaker is actually a headphone, which means that the opening of this speaker directs the sound both to the side and towards you, which is really a big plus when listening to music or watching movies. However, this also means that when you talk to someone, the sound not only goes in your ear, but up as well, so most people around you will hear the person you're talking to very clearly, even if you don't want to. The speakers are as signed by Carmen Carden and the quality is very good. They're not too loud, but they're finely balanced so you can enjoy music when your headphones are not nearby. Inside the case is the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset that will report overheating during stress testing benchmarks and reacts uncomfortably high temperatures on the entire backside, especially near the top of the phone. Now, of course, no games or apps you use every day will get anywhere near that level, but we like to know where the limits are, and this will certainly be relevant in a couple of years. While playing on the phone, the heating was negligible, even while gaming and charging the phone at the same time, and we never received an overheating warning, which just shows how some benchmarking tools can achieve unrealistic load. Xiaomi 12S Ultra is available with 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage space. We got the version with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage and the system automatically adds another 3 gigabytes of virtual RAM that it allocates from the much slower storage memory. In the benchmarking apps, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra was either the best or at the top in terms of results, which is expected from Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 platform and plenty of RAM. 
In addition to the main IMX 989, the 12S Ultra also has two Sony IMX 586 sensors behind two different cameras. The first one is a wide-angle camera with Unreal 128-degree angle and autofocus system, while the second one is a stabilized periscope zoom camera with 120mm equivalent focal length compared to the main camera's 23mm, which means that the optical zoom is effective 5x with f4.1 aperture. Above the wide-angle camera, in the middle of the camera system are the laser transmitter and receiver, while on the right are two LED flashes. The only camera that does not have an autofocus system is the front 32 megapixel camera with f2.4 aperture. Like the Mix Fold 2, the 12S Ultra has Leica Authentic and Leica Vibrant options that give photos two absolutely different looks. The vibrant option is more alive with sharper edges while authentic is closer to what you see outside the camera lens with a slight softer, more natural look. Daylight pictures are rich in detail with a good dynamic range, though with a slightly higher contrast that can cut a bit of detail in darkest part of the scene. Although the shooting conditions weren't exactly ideal during our test, we had the chance to see how the 12S Ultra behaves when everything isn't so bright and shiny. However, even on a cloudy day, the images were very good, reminding us what the large sensor on a smartphone can really do. The colors are reproduced according to the profile you choose, so if you really want full control, there's also a pro mode, which in addition to shooting in RAW format, gives a live histogram and you can control all image parameters, white balance, focus, shutter speed, ISO and exposure. Using the full resolution of the sensor is also possible and 50 megapixel images do not merge adjacent pixels. Therefore, you get a much higher level of detail with a slightly softer image and tolerable amount of noise. Portraits are also very good with a nice bokeh effect and good separation of the subject from the background. Unlike for example the Mate 50 Pro, the Xiaomi has a pronounced contrast which looks pleasing as well as more natural display of colors in the authentic mode, but it can miss the focus when taking a quick picture of something, which sucks if you want to capture a fleeting moment and can get a do-over. However, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra does its best to capture natural photos, avoiding that recognizable HDR effect that everyone definitely abuses on social networks. Likewise, the night photos taken with the main camera do not turn night into day, but rather try to capture the moment as it is and make it bright enough so that all important parts of the frame are visible. This is especially noticeable with light sources where the halo effect has been deliberately avoided in order to capture details in the environment. All in all, very good photos with proper white balance and good colors, the overall quality of which can be attributed to the automatic night mode. Switching to full night mode doesn't improve things enough to use it, so staying on the automatic is highly recommended. The wide-angle lens is one of the widest we've seen on the smartphone, so it's no wonder Xiaomi decided to place it at the central position of the back. The images are very good with the same color rendition and the same pronounced contrast that creates the particular look. The dynamic range is wide and the distortion correction is excellent. The autofocus system helps with sharpness, which is expected from the top-of-the-line smartphone. Similarly, the telephoto lens with the same sensor provides a significant 5x magnification, which is more than many flagships that usually stick with 2x to 3x range. The zoomed-in parts of the frame are very detailed with a bit of sharpening in post-processing, but not too terrible. Colors are expectedly good and you can choose whether you want everything to pop in vibrant mode or more natural look in the authentic view. And when it gets dark, the wide-angle camera with automatic night mode left on takes good photos with wide dynamic range and good color saturation. There's a really lot of detail so you can use this camera even at night when you want a wider shot or a specific effect. The images are a little bit more modest than on the main camera, but still much better than an average smartphone wide-angle camera. A telephoto night shots will mainly use the main camera and crop the frame, taking advantage of that f1.9 aperture to gather as much light as possible. The periscope camera only activates when there is enough light in the frame and those images are noticeably better than those cropped from the image camera, but you have no control over camera selection. 
As with the main and wide-angle cameras, the dedicated night mode doesn't do any better than automatic, so it shouldn't be used unless you're shooting in pitch dark, though your main camera will definitely kick in and the image will have a lot of noise. Unfortunately, Xiaomi 12s Ultra does not have macro capabilities with any of its cameras and the minimum distance from the object on which the camera allows to focus is about 5 centimeters. Selfies are also very good with nice background blur in portrait mode. The dynamic range is good, the colors are natural, although they lean a little towards the colder spectrum, which can make the skin color of the face look lighter than it actually is. Although it is not practical, you can use the large reflective surface of the camera system on the back to see yourself and take selfies with the main camera and take advantage of the indefinitely better quality. Now when it comes to video, the Xiaomi 12s Ultra allows 4K at 30 and 60 FPS and 8K at 24 FPS on all three rear cameras, which is really impressive, although 8K footage is still inferior in quality to 4K. Whether you shoot 4K at 30 or 60 FPS, the footage is very good with pronounced contrast and excellent colors. There's a lot of detail, but a bit more in 30 FPS as the bitrate is around 60 to 63 megabits per second in both 30 and 60 FPS. Stabilization is good, but not good enough to completely neutralize movement when walking. When the light source is directly behind you, the camera manages to cope with balancing the brightness of the frame, but not enough to illuminate the subject's face as needed to achieve the effect that, for example, the iPhone 14 Pro and the S22 Ultra achieve without any problems. The wide-angle camera stabilizes the frame much better and eliminates movement when walking, but it has slightly washed out colors and narrower dynamic range. However, in high contrast scenes, it copes well with the sun in the frame, managing to capture the rest of the scene nicely. When you really need it, there is a steady video pro recording mode in which stabilization is the priority, but the maximum resolution is 1080p at 30fps. Unfortunately, the telephoto camera has a completely different color profile with much calmer colors, but also an enviable level of detail, so it will serve well if you need to shoot something in the distance. In the dark, the main camera takes good photos, but if you're shooting a scene with a lot of people in the frame, the AI can get confused trying to keep them sharp, so the focus will often wander all around. For moments when the focus is fixed, the shots are very good in terms of detail, color, sharpness, and contrast. This cannot be said for the wide-angle camera, sadly, which is much worse when there is not enough light in the frame. Despite the autofocus system, the camera takes much darker video with sharpness decreasing from the center to the edges. Focusing could be better here too, while the camera reproduction is as good as the main camera. Unfortunately, the telephoto camera refuses to activate even in a well-lit scene during the night, so the main camera has to take over. This means a lot of colors and a good dynamic range, but also a digital zoom in with a lot of noise and little detail, so it's highly recommended that you skip this camera at night. Now, after spending some time with the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, namely its cameras, I have to admit that I'm sorry that this phone will only be sold in China. The large sensor is really great, but it seems to lag behind the competition in some areas, like video for example. Every manufacturer tries to make their phone photos have a specific look that is a little different from what others are doing, and this one is no exception. The camera was made in partnership with the Leica company that provides their color expertise, so you can choose the display that suits you better, and the phone is set to create slightly more contrasty scene, which again, some will like and some won't, and that's completely fine. If you were expecting the best photos and videos in the world with the largest phone sensor in the world, you're honestly gonna be disappointed. Also, let's not forget that Apple managed to compete with other manufacturers who were racing to the 200 megapixel finish line with way smaller sensor and lower resolutions. And this doesn't necessarily mean that the 12S Ultra has a bad camera system, but rather that after all the hype, the expectation bar was set far too high, so every flaw really counts. So in the end, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra isn't just a phone with the largest sensor, it's definitely much more than that. It has an exceptional screen, attractive design, premium construction and top performance. And as far as the cameras are concerned, you'll only notice the difference we're talking about when you take two identical shots at the same time with competing phones like the iPhone 14 Pro, S22 Ultra, Mate 50 Pro, X80 Pro and other similar flagships. 
if you have the patience and will to learn how to use the pro camera mode which gives you great control over all important parameters you can leave your dslr in your drawer at home thank you for watching another bench house review this time featuring the xiaomi 12s ultra for more tech reviews be sure to subscribe to our channel and enable the notification icon below my name is marco and i will see you next time